Welcome to Isha Gaming. I am going to talk about my top 10 Hyperdimension Neptunia games. It is a series that I have been obsessed with ever since 2014. There are so many games and I know that a lot of my followers has never played a Neptunia game. I'm going to guide you through this series. This is my complete guide. I've played all the games, I own all the games, I have something to say about all of the games. So a top 10 is definitely in order. All of these games are by ID Factory and Compile Heart. If you are new to my channel, subscribe. So the Neptunia series is in short an RPG series set in several different dimensions actually, across all games. One of them being the Hyper Dimension, which is your first dimension if you follow the canon storyline. In this world there are several nations also named after real world companies, with a ruler to each of the nations called a CPU. CPUs can transform to their HDD forms with the use of share crystals, also known as power from the people believing in them. The nations are as follows. Loi, which is the Nintendo nation, because Loi is the Wii, with Blan as the CPU Whiteheart. You have Last Station, the PlayStation nation, with Noir as CPU Blackheart. Leanbox as the Xbox nation, with Vert as the CPU Greenheart. And then you have Planetune, with Neptune as the CPU Purple Heart. Neptune has a younger sister called Nepgear, based off the Game Gear. Blan has two younger sisters, Rom and Ram, based on the Nintendo DS. And Noir has her sister, Uni, based on the PSP. Does this sound crazy to you yet? Are you interested? Because this is basically the plot and storyline in the Neptunia franchise. And this is one of the reasons the story, the crazy story, taking things from real life, was actually one of the things that made me interested in this series to begin with. Also, we have the art style, which I just love. There are currently 11 games in this franchise, not counting remakes. Some are good, others are not, some are just okay. You have a mainline series and you have a bunch of spin-offs. Now up to number 10, please hit like on the video before we continue and subscribe if you are new. Tent place. I am putting Neptunia Virtual Stars on 10th place. It is the newest Neptunia game and it has not in any way hooked me. I really tried to give this game a chance. I played it for several days, but I feel like there is so much that is different in this title. Like the writing and the conversations, they don't feel like the old conversations and dialogues between the characters that I am used to. So many things are new in this game. I was given this as a review code for the PS4, and it is a spin-off title. In Virtual Stars you follow the main characters teaming up with virtual idols to save a planet called Emo from the Antis. It is an action RPG slash third person shooter. The Neptunia series is known for several genres and this is one of the spin-off genres. I did have higher expectations of this game, that is why this is ranking really low on my list, unfortunately. Ninth place. I am putting Megatag Mansion Blonde plus Neptune vs Zombies, a 2015 game. This is also a spin-off title. It is okay, but it's not one of the best spin-off titles, let's just say. The Nep girls are school girls in this game, but the academy is being infiltrated by a bunch of zombies. Meanwhile, Lan, the Nintendo Nation girl, wants to shoot a movie, so they fight the hordes of zombies while shooting their film. This is a hack and slash muso game, much like Neptunia U, which I will talk about really soon. You beat a lot of enemies and you progress the story. It is mission based and the story cutscenes are just as whimsical and fourth wall breaking as usual. You can jump, dash, use a strong and fast attacks and play as any of the girls. Cute little game. Place number 8. In 8th place I am putting 4 Goddesses Online, a PlayStation 4 game. It is actually a 2017 spin-off title again, and this time the Nep girls are actually playing an MMO game. The infamous 4 Goddesses Online game that Vert has in earlier games referred to several times. So it is, in a way, simulating an MMO game with the dungeons, roles, and dialogue between them about playing the MMO game. Super fort wall breaking. 
This game doesn't look particularly bad, it actually looks beautiful in some sections because they used a new engine in this game. Even though I played this game a ton, I never truly got around to beat it. Maybe I will do that someday, who knows. I own the limited edition of this game, full of fun things. I unboxed this in an ancient video on Isha Gaming. <laughs> what? I can link to that down below. I actually have a lot of the limited editions of the series. One thing that I found to be disappointing in this title is that the character portraits in the dialogues and cutscenes, they don't move. They are very still. But otherwise, just an okay game. Seventh place. I am putting on this game. Mega Dimension Neptunia Victory 2. It is a 2015 game and this game is actually in the canon timeline. It is a PS4 game but it was also re-released to the Switch in 2020. Here is the re-release for the Switch. So this one you can actually play on the Switch. It is a turn-based RPG with a ton of locations, quests, items and characters. This combat style is what the Neptunia series is most known for, but in my opinion this game opens up and gets better at the later parts of the story. So I feel like you have to play this game for quite some time and then everything just opens up and you get more freedom to do whatever the hell you want. This game actually looks the best on PS4, and I feel like it actually looks a bit blurry on the Switch. So, PS4 version it is. Here is the limited edition of Mega Dimension Neptunia Victory 2. It is a good game, but it's not the best place to start off the Neptunia series, in my opinion. Place number 6. We have this game. Super Dimension Neptune vs. Sega Hard Girls. Also a spin-off title game from 2015. Even though it is considered a spin-off game, it is the one that plays actually the closest to the canon games in its gameplay. Therefore, I find this to be a very appealing spin-off title. This time you can actually climb, jump and crawl and slide when you are exploring the dungeons. And that was the first time you could do that. It is a turn-based RPG with special attacks, normal attacks and skills and all the RPG stuff that you are familiar with from before. The story and dialogue are especially good in this cute game, so I have to say I really enjoyed this Neptunia title. I recommend it. Place number five. In place number five, I am putting Hyper Devotion Noir, Goddess Blackheart, one of my favorite spin offs in the series. It is a 2014 spin off. 2014 was just such a big year for the series. This is a spin off with an entirely different playstyle and graphical style. This time, the graphical style is more like a chibi style. I was thoroughly addicted to this game, with great characters, great writing and a great sense of progression. It is a grid-based tactical RPG this time around, similar to the gameplay that you can find in Fire Emblem or Disgaea games. And you can level up your friendship levels too, which I find to be so appealing, I don't know. Actually a good spin-off game. I enjoyed it so much. In fourth place, we have Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 2. This is a remake of Neptunia Mark II that was released in 2011. This remake, on the other hand, released in 2014. This is the second game in the canon timeline where you play as the main CPU's younger sisters going on a mission to rescue them, the real CPU's. So you play as Rom and Ram, Netgear and Uni, and you are off to save Neptune, Blonde, Virch and Noir. This is a turn-based RPG, explore dungeons, fight, level up and do quests. I recommend this game if you like the CPU candidates more than the CPUs themselves, but it is very similar to Rebirth 1 and 3. So actually all of the games in the Rebirth series, they are good, they are canon and they are similar. So if you like one of them, you will like all of them. Third place, Hyperdimension Neptunia U Action Unleashed. 
This is a spin-off title, again. And this time it is a hack and slash muso game, much like the blonde game, that served as a true and real addiction to me back in 2014. Ask anyone. I was obsessed with this game. Everyone got crazy from how much I played this together with my cousins. We talked about this game every day, all day. We were super obsessed. It is, in my opinion, the strongest spin-off title in the series. It is fun and it is fast and actually preferable by far over Blonde plus Neptune versus Zombies because in this game you can actually spam all your powerful skill attacks way more often than you could in the Blonde game. I have great memories with this game so if you ever find this make sure you pick it up. The U in Neptunia U is a joke on the Wii U but it's not released on the Wii U it's just an inside joke. I have this game in limited edition as well. Second place. This is a really tough one, but this one goes in second place. It almost made first place, but I have good reason for the first place. This could just as well be first place. I'm talking about Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1. It is a remake of the first ever game from 2011, and this came out in 2013. This is the very best place to start your entire Neptunia journey. This is also the very best place to start if you want to follow along the canon storyline and timeline. This game is actually rare. You're lucky if you can find this game. And it is expensive. I got this from a subscriber, thank you again. Side quest, yes. In this game it is where you get introduced to all of the characters and they fight in the first true console war that is going on between them. The soundtrack of this game is legit a 10 out of 10 and I can honestly only praise this title as it was the first I ever played and I fell completely in love with the characters ever since. It is a turn-based RPG, fun AF dialogues that are constantly breaking the fourth wall. Neptune is always referring to that they are video game characters. And this is also where Neptune's personality shines brightest. Such a fun game. Find this, play it. I highly recommend it. But guys, in first place, Neptunia Rebirth 3. This is a remake of Victory from 2012, this released in 2014. And if you ever liked or enjoyed Rebirth 1 or 2, this is all that and then some. Everything is improved upon, everything is better and faster, even more playable characters, just as good writing as found in 1 and 2. It is much of the same dungeon exploring turn-based RPG, only this is my most played Neptunia game. And for that reason alone, this deserves first place. I have the limited edition of this game as well. I love it. It is so good. So good. Now everyone, I have a special guest on the channel. Yellow Super Nintendo. One of my favorite YouTube channels. He is the king of the Neptunia series. He has reviewed all of the games. He does it way better than me. Let's check out what he has to say. Hey everyone, Yellow Super Nintendo, AKA YZN here. I was invited to talk a little about my favorite Neptunia game, so here I am. But which is my favorite? Could it be the original PS3 game because of its unmatched story, immersion, and world building? Maybe the second game in the series, Neptunia Mark II, because it introduced my favorite character Nepgear, as well as the gameplay mechanics that every mainline game after would be based on? Or perhaps even Super Neptunia RPG, the only other game to have a story that feels like the one in the first game. All good candidates in my view, but I'm going to go with a different game which is Mega Dimension Neptunia V2. Why is it my favorite? Well. For starters, it's in my opinion the peak so far of what a mainline NEP game is. It's got good gameplay mechanics, pretty good looking graphics, we get flashy transformations and graphical effects the Rebirth games didn't have, the story is interesting, funny, and I like the characters they introduced. I also liked that bit where the characters were split up, which allowed for some more unique viewpoints of the story. But the key word here is mainly refinement. Most of the elements we see in V2 we're around in some kind of form since Mark II. 
but everything's tweaked to be a bit nicer feeling, nicer looking, and better playing. There's some new features that previous games didn't have, like the next forms for example, and there's also those fights against those huge enemies. And finally we got new dungeons and a ton of new music, which is a nice change from uh, the Rebirth games which all felt very similar. V2, out of all mainline titles, feels the least like a budget game, and I think that's a great accomplishment given where the series started. And that's why Mega Dimension Neptunia V2 is my favorite Neptunia game. Now I'm going to end the video with some avoids. I don't personally recommend producing perfection because it is a idle game that is not really a game. It is more like uh, just conversations and the girls dancing. However, if you are a hardcore fan, a lot of the conversations are good. I found what I needed, but it is not for everyone. Don't recommend it. And I also don't recommend Super Neptunia RPG. That is also on the Switch. I couldn't get into it. It felt very laggy and I am very sorry, but I didn't enjoy the game. I found the world way too hard to navigate and it has a playstyle that I generally don't find very enjoyable. I don't really enjoy 2D sprites and side scrolling and I found the combat to be confusing. Now, thank you so much for watching this video all the way! Please subscribe to my channel if you found this video to be useful. A super big shout out to Yellow Super Nintendo. And I am so grateful that I got to borrow a lot of his gameplay footage for this video. Go over to his channel, check him out, and please like everything he posts and subscribe to his channel. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Hit that subscribe button everyone.